Hi friends, it's Pan with Silver and Sparkles. And I've got another one page wonder for us today. So this one, you're gonna be able to make this um, little journal out of one piece. We're actually gonna, it's gonna be smaller than eight and a half by 11 or A4, but you don't need 12 by 12 paper for this one. But if you prefer to use scrapbook paper, just cut your paper to the size I'm gonna give you. Okay, so, um, I made mine, I just love it, all these little pages. I made mine with some of the elements and papers from my Floral Delights digital kit. So I'll make sure to link that for you in the description in case you're interested. But again, use any papers you have on hand. Okay, so that's what we're going to make. We are going to start with a piece of paper. So you need to cut your paper to eight and a half by 10 inches. I've already cut mine also into the strips. So I don't know how to make this go. But anyway, my piece of paper was eight. Was it eight and a half? Hmm. Oh, it was. It was eight and a half <laughs> because you have a little strip left over um, by 10 inches. And then you need to cut on the um, eight and a half inch side, three strips that are two and three quarter inches wide. And that will leave you with one little strip left, okay? That you can use to decorate with or for something else. So 10 by two and three quarters, 10 by two and three quarters, and 10 by two and three quarters, okay? So however you, you get those, and if you wanted to use three different papers, you could, that would be okay. Um, this might even be fun to do as a scrap buster if you happen to have some of the um, partial pieces of paper left, that might work too. All right, we are gonna do some very simple scoring. You want to pick one piece and we are gonna score it at two and a half inches. I'm just randomly picking mine. I don't really know how the patterns are gonna flow together yet. Score your second piece at three and a half inches and score your last piece at four and a half inches. All right, I will have all the measurements and the scoring in the description for you guys. So don't worry, just refer to that if you, um, you know, if you decide to make one, okay? So now each of these strips has been scored and we're gonna fold, and because these are kind of long and skinny, you really do, like it's really easy, right? Even with the score to get that crooked, just, you know, be careful and go ahead and crease these so that, they are nice and neat. And once you get them creased, you'll wanna start looking at your patterns to decide which, which way you want to fold it. If you're gonna leave it this way or if you need to flip it back this way, okay? And I do suggest you use double-sided paper just because it's um, the way your project will layer, you're gonna see both sides. If you decide to use a one-sided piece of paper, you can always just then layer the, the white side, right? And make it look pretty. So up to you. I really like this flower. And this, this kit, um, I was kind of thinking, you know, oh, spring flowers, but I tried to pick a couple of the pages that had more of the oranges because I think this could also be just a really fun fall, fall, um, kind of patterns too. Okay, and so what, what you're gonna start doing then is just nestling them together to see how you like your patterns. And mine, even though um, I printed two different patterns on each side, you know, it, it, it's kind of similar and they kind of flow together. So it just really is a personal preference on what you think looks good. In each space, in each place. Do that. I'm just playing with mine. Okay, I think I'm just gonna leave it like this and we're gonna go for it. All right, now before we start talking about your different options for binding it together, 
I'm going to show you what I did, which was I used one of those paper edgers. And my, this is a scallop one that's ancient from Stamping Up. And I did every other page um, with a scalloped edge. Um, this is optional, but I do like the look. So again, I'm being very careful remembering which one I'm on. I'm going to go ahead and do that on here. Um, and again, if you don't have one of these, that's okay. It really is just optional, but isn't that cute? Okay. And then I'm going to skip this page. And then I'm going to do the, the scallop on this one. Whoops, didn't go all the way over. I'm gonna have to just punch that a third time to make sure it is chomped loose. There's probably like more of a method of how you're supposed to do that, but I don't know. All right, and then it's this layer that needs to be punched next. And that's why I said, you know, you just kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing. And then um, you'll know which page to punch if you're going to do this. And there's different patterns and designs of these punches. You can get them other places um, at your craft stores or online or something. Okay. So now, again, I'm going to put everything back together and make sure I like how it's looking. <laughs> you kind of have to play with it to get the layers back together. Okay, very happy with that. I'm also going to take a moment and ink mine. I'm using uh, Walnut Distress Ink. I don't know if you guys, if you've watched some of my other videos and <laughs> I've been letting my ink pad um, unfortunately stay open too long and it's been getting dry. I did do a really heavy duty re-ink on it. I um, did the dropper, let all that soak in, and then I did it again and let it soak in overnight and it is finally starting to work a little bit better. Um, I, I just, I craft so much, it's open sometimes a good part of the day and um, you know, that's always going to cause problems, I guess. Um, and I do replace, I mean, I re-ink them, but I replace them periodically as well because there's nothing like a fresh ink pad, right? But um, I always feel like I can, I can work with it. I can make it work. <clears throat> and then when I start using it, I'm so frustrated. So, all right. Um, ink as much or as little as you want to make your little journal look cute. This is so easy, um, and I just love how it turns out. Now, another thing that I'll mention is this can also be made a larger size using a 12 by 12 piece of paper. It's just the measurements are a little different. And if you guys are interested in that or would like to see me do a tutorial on that, let me know, and I can plan one of those for you guys using um, scrapbook paper, 12 by 12 paper. All right, now you have a couple of options. And I get this question a lot when I make these smaller journals and folios. You can run it, can you run it through a sewing machine? You absolutely could run this through your sewing machine. And I most likely will make some that I run through my sewing machine. However, as I have shared with you guys before, I have not figured out how to film myself working on my sewing machine, and I don't wanna step away and um, do that off camera, and I don't know how to edit my video <laughs> to stop it and come back, so I'm, I'm sharing all of the things I don't know how to do with you guys. So I'm not going to put mine on my sewing machine, even though I do think that would be a great option, okay? Um, I am instead going to use some embroidery floss because I have, if I can find the color that I was using, I have some, I really liked this really kind of neutral -y. here it is. I don't know, I don't know, kind of like a fawn color. I thought it went really well with these papers. So that's what we're gonna do for mine is do that same that I do quite often, um, three pamphlet stitch. 
Now, if you're running it through the sewing machine or if you're doing it by hand, I suggest you um, clip your papers together so that they don't go all crazy on you and um, you make sure they stay together. Now this is two and three quarter inches wide, which is also seven centimeters. For me, using the centimeter is a little bit easier and I'm gonna poke my hole at three and a half and I'm gonna do one at one and a half and at five and a half centimeters just to get three holes in my little folio that are um, spaced out evenly, right? Okay, I also was gonna mention, Mom, so I'm just gonna say this really quick. Um, and again, I have lots of videos that show you how to do a three-hole pamphlet stitch. You can, of course, watch me do it here. But if you need more detailed instructions, you may wanna go back to one of the mini videos that I show you guys how to do that. Um, I get asked to, well, could I just glue these pages together? And you know what? In this project, I actually think it would work just fine. And the way I would do that is I would put a thin, just a thin bead of glue on your first layer right where I've inked it on that crease line and glue the page to it and then the middle one and glue it. I really think that would hold this together. And if you if you don't sew or you don't want to do a, a quick three-hole pamphlet stitch, um, I think it would work. So that's another option for you guys. Um, you know, you just don't want to do a real heavy, wide bead of glue. I would, um, you know, just use a precision tip um, glue bottle or somehow get it on there really thin and... Um, glue it together and make sure it dries. All right, so this is a pretty quick um, signature. I just did a three hole pamphlet stitch and I'm tying it three times. Now on my first one, I also tied a cute little bow. Um, my thread is not quite even. But let's see if I can make a cute little bow out of this one too. If not, we'll move on. But um, it did look cute. Oh, nothing like trying to tie a bow with a piece of thread that's not quite long enough. Um, it's okay. It's not a great bow, but I'm gonna leave it. If you wanna make sure your bow doesn't come unraveled, put a little drop of glue right there on it. This is gonna bother me, guys. I'm gonna have to redo it. Um, you know, just put a little drop of glue on there and then it won't untie. If you're not 100% committed to your bow, don't put the glue on it. And that way, th this piece of the string is just too short, y'all. So we're not gonna have a bow on this one. There we go. Um, you know, don't put the glue on it and then you can change your mind if you if you decide you want to change your mind. And I'm gonna trim this just so it doesn't hang off. All right, and now it's just the fun part of decorating. And um, I am noticing something. I did not score my journal accurately. Um, I must have been off when I was scoring and talking and did not get it exactly at two and a half, three and a half, and four and a half. Because look at this strip. It is, um, I scored it at two. And then what it did is it changed the width of the layer on this side too. I'm going to leave it. I'm okay with it being a little bit like that. But if you notice, this first flap on the original was just a little bit wider. Not quite sure what I did, but it also shows you, even when you make a mistake, you can still have a pretty project. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> All right, so with this particular kit that I chose to work with, um, I've already cut out 
some of the little pieces for us to decorate with. And then I have sitting here some of the other sheets in case we need something else. I do love the, the faux stamps that come with this one. And I don't know if you guys noticed, I made a really fun pocket. Look at this. Um, on these two pages, like I said, everything kind of blends together, which I love. But I just used some of these um, to make a little pocket. So I can show you guys how I did that um, because I think it looks cute. I used one of the strips to make this really long pocket. Now the words that I used on here are just from a kit I have had printed out that was just in my stash and I'm pretty sure it was from Pink Monarch Prints, but just some words. One thing I did think of after I had finished this one is um, for my gratitude kit, um, there's some quotes that would coordinate well with this paper but then also the freebie and this is the printed this is the version that comes with the kit I've got a full page version of these affirmations that's a freebie on buy me a coffee I'll link it in the description you can then just print it at 50% to get it this size and I think these colors coordinate really well so we might use some of these affirmations as we're decorating hours instead of the strips of words or both but anyway just um, always trying to think of how you can use things maybe that you already have or if you need something you could go get the freebie to help decorate with whatever papers you're using so I do want to do something fun for the cover and I used one of these on the original cover but it's this one's too narrow Ooh, maybe the oval will work and it kind of um of course, I don't necessarily want to cover up this beautiful flower. So we might just do a strip here, like maybe a strip of something. Um, or even maybe we just pick one of the affirmations and put it on here, maybe with some ribbon. I'm going to cut out See the Good simply because it's one of the smallest ones that I have. And this is a pretty tiny flap. And we will see, see, we'll see what we think. How about that? And then I have this chiffon um, ribbon that I was using and I've already cut some pieces a little bit smaller, thinner from it. So maybe we can tuck just a little piece of this under here and that'll give us a little bit of texture too. It's very raggedy where I cut it. I'm gonna use a glue dot to it. <laughs> this happens to me all the time with these things. They are so sticky and if you don't roll them correctly, getting them to release on the paper is sometimes a challenge. Okay. And I glued, glued some of my hair to that one. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I was going to mention to you, um, now I've got to remember the name. Her name is Carolyn. I'm going to link her channel um, in the description, she made some beautiful gratitude pockets cards. She's going to give them to some friends of hers um, that she's in a group with. They do a gratitude meeting or group every month and she's doing it as a little gift for them. But anyway, she made this beautiful video and showed you a different way to use, um, the, pocket size papers from the gratitude kit guys they're gorgeous so i'm going to link that for you go give her some love go check out her video and see what you guys think like i said i'll link it for you below because they are just wonderful um and I really liked she talked about some of the different prompts that i put in the kit and how it makes you think and um Anyway, I just really enjoyed it, and I think you guys might too, so go check her out. All right, let me show you real quick how I did the um, pocket I was telling you guys about on some of the pages. So let's do a strip 
on this page and on this page. So I already have some cut out. So basically I decided to also tear, tear mine and got a little bit rougher edge. But for this one, I think I'll just cut. Um, and I wanna use, I'm gonna make it the length of the pocket. So all but one of these. So we'll use the paper trimmer. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six of the little tickets cut that one off and then we are going to trim the white part off and then I'm going to just cut right down the middle to make the little pocket okay you can get quite in the middle but it's okay it's close enough and then to punch out these little uh, the little circles if you have like a hole punch that's that size that's great I don't so I'm going to show you how I used my stub punch to do that so those on the edge are obviously quite easy to do these I'm not going to do a hard fold I'm just kind of holding it right where um, that would be folded and use my stub punch and it cuts that out for me this one needed a little bit more. So it gets that little um, little circle shape out of there. Um, again, these were intended like to be tickets with a little stub edge. But I found that it was kind of fun to make a little shallow pocket with it. And when you have a journal with very narrow pages like this, it worked. So even though, like I said, I'm sort of creasing these, I'm not doing a hard, hard crease, and it seemed to be okay. And the last one. All right, I can make a mess on my desk, can't I? <laughs> Oops. You know what, I made this one too long. We're gonna have to cut one of the little one of them off I was looking at the edge of this paper so instead we just need five and it's gonna fit right there now I am going to ink this and I think the one that I had left over that I made and didn't use will fit on this page so we'll see we will check that out and we can decorate this pocket by, you know, again, adding a word or doing something else if we want to. But it's just going to be a shallow pocket. So I'm going to add glue to three sides, leave the top open. And I'm going to put it in here. Very sweet. Now this one, it will fit. It has the torn top, but it's okay. It just kind of grabs and holds that ink a little more, which is why I did that. But we're gonna use it anyway. And I am, I wasn't very neat with my glue. Um, I am gonna have to come pretty close to the center of the signature, and that's all right, um, to make it fit, but I like that. All right, so I'm gonna give those some time to dry and then we'll tuck some items in there as we go. I like the front. Now, again, I did some different sized pockets and then tucked tags and things in there. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna necessarily try to make this one be exactly like the, the first one. We're just gonna make some pockets. All right, these strips came, you could also cut them from the pages, of course, but these were some strips that I included in the kit. The one here was one that kind of um, replicated torn paper. Uh, these are just some straight ones, so we could tear them if we wanted to. I think I'm gonna just tear the one end, and we're gonna make another long, skinny pocket for this page and we'll do some different shapes for some of the other pages. I did like doing a long skinny pocket for this one. It just gives this um, back 
piece of paper a little more stability to have that layer. I went a little further <clears throat> on this one and even backed it. It's optional just because I felt like mine was too floppy and I wanted it to have a little more stability, but I'm not gonna do that on this one because I do not wanna cover up that gorgeous flower because we could put maybe something here. Now I did add some neutral paper for a nice large journaling spot in the original one. Let's see if I have any of this paper left. I've made some tags out of it. It's sitting here on my, on my table. Um, this piece will work. Oh, some coffee dyed paper would be really pretty too. Maybe we'll use that. Let's use the coffee dyed paper. It's a little bit smaller, but that way you still get to see some of the pattern. And um, I like that. Add just a little bit of ink to it. And if we want to decorate the page some, we can. But I'm going to do this. And again, depending on what papers you choose to make yours with, you may have some, you may have a neutral or you may decide to leave the white um, and only use a one-sided paper and then layer some things um, to where they show on the flaps. And then you'd have lots of spots you could leave as journaling spots. So lots of things to consider. All right. So again, um, the kit had quite a few pockets that were, I think four maybe, that were triangles that I ended up just trimming down to fit for a couple of spaces. Um, you can also, there's some squares in there and we could turn one of these into a cute little um, corner tuck for one of the pages. And then I also have some strips that I printed, or pages that I printed and I have sitting here that could get used. So let's make, let's make a pocket out of one of these. So I, this is um, two and three quarter inches tall. So I'm gonna cut my square two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then we're just going to slice it and now we have some easy corner pockets and if it's just a smidge too tall you know you can trim it like that and get a little bit of that pointy pointy edge off so I'm gonna install a corner pocket here and I did print this on both sides so I can kind of decide which pattern I want Put one there, and I have these pockets on those two pages. This would be good, it's neutral enough for some journaling, so I'm gonna leave that. And maybe we will add just another pocket on this one. Again, I'm gonna just snip ever so slightly those pointy corners, so I don't have to worry about them hanging off. We'll do another triangle pocket. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and do some more decorating and decide what we wanna put in the pockets. This one needs something. Why don't we put um, a whale tab on here? It's a little different paper. Let's use this one. It looks like it's a little bird's nest with flowers. Um, again, there were all kinds of elements in this kit and these I just punched out of kind of a little torn paper element that was in the kit. All right, I think that looks cute up next to that scallop. And I decided to put the nest piece on the front so that this flower is not upside down. <laughs> All right. 
fun. Now, let's go back to these affirmations and use them to help decorate these pages. Now, whenever you're decorating, like when we're decorating this page, you have to remember you might see, see it depending on what you put on here. So you might want to consider that. Not that it's a bad thing, but um, just think about that. All right, I am going to cut out you matter and just breathe as two good reminders and I could tear these and get some fun edges you can cut lots of choices the other thing will be fun to use these on some of the tags um, as we'll decorate a few tags to add to like these pockets and again see you're gonna see that so I just want to be aware of it it's not a bad thing but whatever I put on here we might see depending on where we tuck it all right I'm gonna put you matter on this tag and I'm gonna use some of this trying somebody asked me um, about some of my favorite supplies and I have to say this really thin twine I love because sometimes I need something really thin but if I want it a touch thicker I just double it over like this and then you get a really nice effect I think Let me turn that a little shorter um and I like, you know, I like some of the wider twine too, but see how that just suddenly looks really heavy to me? Maybe it's because I've gotten used to looking at this one. But um, I don't know. This is probably one of my favorite just little accessories that I use. Um, I don't know. And the funny thing is when I bought it the first time, I've had a couple of rolls now, but when I bought it the first time, it wasn't what I meant to purchase. <gasps> And I was like, oh, no. And, and it's turned out to be one of my favorite things. I love when things like life works out that way. All right. Now, if I want that to show a little more, I'll just scooch it up in the pocket. This will also fit in this pocket. Okay. So I think I like it better in this pocket, scooched up. To there because then you can see the whole bow so that's cute right and let's see just breathe mm -hmm. oh I'm gonna put just breathe right here I think that looks good and again whenever I'm crafting I love having like extras whether it's little pieces of lace twine things like that and I try to use what's on my desk just because I think um, I, I think that works out well. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little square here and do something to this tag. Um, why don't I do? What do you guys, think would that be cute to add a little whale tag to our tag? Why not? It needs some ink. I love again showing you different ways like these are great pulls for tags right um but then sometimes it can just take something up oh well, we're gonna put it on this side up a notch by just doing something a little different or unexpected mm. all right so my husband did a bunch of yard work yesterday <laughs> so tell you guys and we had these bushes that are um, on the walkway, on the other side of the walkway, in the grass, um, as you're walking up to the front door of our house. And um, they have gotten, or they had gotten quite large and a little out of control. And so he was trimming them down and they look great. He did a great job. And then we realized they had been blocking a lot of the comings and goings in our neighborhood. Um, I like that, seeing that through there. Um, and now the dogs are barking even more than usual. That's always fun, right? Um, we call our dogs the Coast Guard because we live on a street that has coast in the name. And um, 
they're the Coast Guards. So anyway, it's just really funny. And so um, now we're like, should we should we do something else? Is there something else we should do <laughs> to get them to to stop barking, or how do we block their view? And I think. Um, lowering the blinds in one of the front windows, of course, is always a good option. But then I feel kind of bad because they love looking outside. Um, you know, it, it's just, I don't know. It's hard to decide what to do because the barking is a little bit insane. All right, I'm going to just punch a tiny circle for this tag and cover up the, um, where you could poke the hole. And make just a really simple tag for this one. I do want to look and pick some more of these affirmations. So I think I'm going to do be grateful every day. Um, and again, if you guys go check out the video Carolyn put up because she used all the affirmations and she did the torn edges and they looked really good. So again, just to give you some ideas of how to use some of these. Hmm, I was trying to decide if I wanted it on the tag. That's too much together. Let's see, what do we have back here? Oh, how about that? How about if we put it here with our journaling spot and then maybe I could write, you know, like what I'm grateful for on that day there. Oh, I haven't used any of the little faux stamps yet. Let's do that next. And this is another journaling spot. I just put that little tag there. Um, here, we'll add another square there. Ah, this will be cute. Let's put a little faux stamp. Now let me see how this is gonna look. This is the one I kind of skipped. I don't have anything on this page yet. And here's the thing, you don't necessarily have to put something on every page or in every pocket when you're first starting out. But I do like to, to try to get these somewhat finished for y'all so you can see. I just think it is so cute. All right, let's put something here. I haven't used one of these kind of interesting little circles. Again, my problem is I just hate covering up all the pretty flowers. <clears throat> it's it's a struggle for me. Ooh, how about, since we're doing a bunch of flowers, we'll do time to bloom. And one of my other favorite ones is be kind to yourself. I, um, I don't know about you guys. I am really good at um, being nice to everyone else, but not always being as nice to myself as I should be. Or I say things to myself that I would not say to someone else. Um, and I don't know why that is. So we'll find a place to put be kind to yourself as a good reminder. And how about we find a way to put a little piece of this trim? Would have been easier if I had um, thought about doing it before I glued the little affirmation down, but there's always a solution. So let's think of how we could do that. And I have an idea, and it involves another little circle. So let's punch us a circle. And the chiffon is really, really um, floppy. And I like it um, in various widths. So I just cut it myself. And even when I end up cutting it kind of raggedy, by the time it starts to fray a little bit and I get it all together the way I want it, it really is okay. All right. And this is where we're gonna use yet another glue dot because I don't have to wait for these to dry. And I think I'm down to my last couple of glue dots. It's gonna be time to buy a new roll of these. So one thing I don't like is I can't see to tell how many are left in there. But um, 
I'm pretty sure I can tell that that is almost done. There we go, cute, right? All right, I am loving it. This one has all these nice affirmations. And my last one, I definitely wanted to find a place for, I was just talking about be kind to yourself. And we'll find a place to put it. I didn't cut it very even, but again, I'm going to be kind to myself and not criticize myself. <laughs> All right. Maybe on this spot that I want to do some more journaling, we could put it on the pocket. I'm going to put it right here, kind of with that, that flag I put. All right. And again, there's plenty of room to stuff some more things in these pockets if we want to. And what's nice about these is you can journal on the other side. Um, just so many things that you could keep doing. But I am happy with both of these that I've made. And these are going to make some great gifts, I think, um, for me to have to give to some friends this year. All right. Or to use for myself. Let me know what you think. Please uh, give the video, if you like it, a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that larger size. Um, yeah, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day.